This was our first trip to Albuquerque, New Mexico for the balloon fiesta. And we've been learning some things while we're here. I'm sure there's a lot more to learn. There's probably more tips you might get from other people, but I wanted to tell you what we've learned about staying here RVing for the fiesta. We're Dave and Karen from Locks on Wheels and we sold our sticks and bricks to RV full time now that we are retired. We travel with our heavy duty truck Leroy, our two k motorcycles, our DRV Dixie and our smart car Zippy. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell to be notified when we post a new video. First of all, I'm going to show you a map here. This map, as far as I'm concerned, pretty well sucks. But majority of the RV $40 stuff is down here in the south lot. And they have shuttles, free shuttles. So it's not a bad place to be because you can get a free shuttle. I don't know if you get the opportunity of where you're going to get off to come into the park, but from what I saw over here, gate 31, and I don't know if there'll be 31 next year, but that was great because there's a lot that happens on this end of the field, and all your food is right in here as well. So that's pretty good, and um, a couple times that we've come through there had absolutely no weight at all. They do sort of like a TSA check when you come through. They really don't, you can't bring any big purses or big backpacks with you. You have to show them your stuff. You have to have your cell phone out, your cameras out, that sort of thing. And you go through metal detectors. You have to buy tickets for each event. And each event or session is either morning or it's afternoon. Now, if you go in the morning and you want to stay all day long, there's nothing happening during the middle of the day and then wait for the stuff that happens in the evening, then you can just stay all day if you want to, or you can buy a morning session and then an evening session, and you can come and go during those sessions as you want, as long as you have your ticket, and they are $10, and you can buy them there at the ticket booth, or you can get them online and print them out, which I found to be quite easy. Uh, back to this map. We were going to be in the South RV lot and then we got an invitation to come to the VIP North lot, which was a new lot that they were testing out and they didn't upcharge us. I think the VIP is like 80 or 100 or something like that. Um, they have other VIP and presidential compounds up here. They're up on a hill and they oversee everything. So those are really expensive. I think the presidential is 150 a night and I think they have sewer and electric and free admission. Um, but we ended up here um, at the VIP North, which ended up being absolutely a perfect area to be in because you could walk over to the launch field by gate of 31. Um, you could, we were up on a, on a bluff here so we could watch things happening from right up here. They flew right over top of us, so if I had a choice but I was coming back, I would go to, to the North, and, unless it's really expensive. Um, and then they gave us directions on how to get, to get in here. Now the traffic patterns will change depending on what time of day it is, if the balloon people are coming in or going. Um, like we, the RVs would come in this way to begin with, and then they just shut it down, and then you got to come in from a different direction, and they don't take anybody after dark. There's a lot of rules, and they'll send those to you when you make your um, reservations in advance. And um, then they, they gave us like a traffic notice that says during the rush periods, it's generally not possible to get back to the RV facilities. So they, it tells you they route and restrict traffic depending on what's going on. Uh, they can sometimes be short with people because people stop and ask the cops questions and that kind of ticks everybody off. So you kind of have to plan what you're going to do. And basically what they're telling you is when the stuff is going on, which is morning or evening, like 4.30 to 8, you may as well just call it 4.30 to 10, and then between 3 and basically 10, uh, you want to be where you're going to be. Um, in the middle of the afternoon from 10 till 3, you can, come, you can come and go as you want, but there's a good possibility that those morning sessions, 4.30 to 10, and then from the evening, from 7 to 10, you may not be able to get out there. Your gates may be closed. So uh, know where you're going to be at those times so you don't have any traffic issues. Um, also, you'll receive um, instructions 
about speed limits and your the tent where you can get your water and sewer and ice and set up for pump outs and that sort of thing. They'll get that information to you when you check in. This we got when we got our first ticket and we um, walked through the gate. This map was probably the most important one we got <laughs> because this one shows you where everything is at. So this is the north end. This is the south end. South RV Park is over here someplace and you got to get shuttled in. Um, but we were actually right here. I mean, we were across the street from the launch area. And that whole green section is the launch area. And then there's a, there were like 176 tents along here with food and jewelry and things like that. Food is extremely expensive. A waffle cake was $13 and french fries were with a, with a lemonade was 20 so <laughs> be prepared. The carving, they have um, the carving where they, they, they auction them off at the end of the day. That happens down here where you can watch them do the carving. The artesian tents, they're also down here so if you want to see a, lo a local crafters, well maybe not local but the crafters, there's stuff there. Um, there is a stage down here where they have live music. They also have some stage down here. But most of your activities, we found ourselves trying basically here in the middle. And when the um, skydivers come in and they land, they're right here in the middle as well. So we found if we came in over here in this gate, got a lot of dinging going on here. Um, came, came in this gate, cut through here, great, got done, got right back. Um, plus, the fireworks were literally yards away from us. Um, all the fireworks is, are just beyond our parking area, so we got close up of the fireworks. So that's another reason why we liked the North End. When you, you go online to their website, you will get or you will see the schedule of events. Looks like this. This is what they'll give you also when you come through the gate. It's the survival guide. This is where the, the map was that I just showed you. But on here they give you the scheduled events and the entertainment and who the artisans are and where the food are and who's doing the food. But when you see online or you see on here, stuff starts happening very early in the morning like at 6 o'clock. And they'll have balloons that'll take off at 6 o'clock. And then they have an opening ceremony. And they do the, the Star Spangled Banner, and they actually had some old vintage, I think they were bombers that flew over us in pattern, which was very cool. And then they have the uh, Mass Ascension, which is when, well, he, at this, this year they had 580 balloons, and they all take off. <clears throat> they don't take off, but once they have to kind of take off in layers, it was very cool. And then they come back in and land, that whole thing lasts about two hours. Then they had the chainsaw thing going on after that all day. And then pretty much it's quiet for the rest of the day. And then you get back into uh, around 5 o'clock where they have skydivers come in and land. And then they get into the evening activities for the, the twinkle glow. And it's, that's fabulous. That's, that's a couple hours. And then they have the fireworks. And they do that on Saturday and Sunday. Monday and Tuesday are lighter days. Wednesday, we are going to be leaving on Wednesday, um, but it's kind of the same thing. They have a fly-in competition. We're going to watch that before we leave. I guess that's probably where they have to try to meet a mark or something. And then later on in the week, they have more of the specialty type balloons where they have the neat shapes. So that kind of gives you the idea of the schedule. We're not here for nine days. We're, we came in a couple days early, and with an RV, I highly recommend you come in Thursday. I have heard that people that come in on Friday have couple hours of wait. Well, we, we came in on Wednesday and there, we had absolutely no wait. We and We had no problem at all. Um, Thursday I didn't see that much of a, a wait for people but Friday it was starting to pick up. So if you can come in early and we, we took a balloon ride on Thursday so we didn't we didn't waste any of our our time Friday it rained all day so we didn't get to do anything. We wanted to go riding on the spiders but we're gonna wait until Monday for that. The weather this time of year in New Mexico is really nice. At uh, In the evenings it gets quite cool. Um, it's gotten down into the 40s. In the daytime it's gotten up to like 85. When the sessions are going on early in the morning, early in the afternoon, you're going to need 
your uh, jacket and something to cover your ears and maybe gloves too. So uh, you also, I would recommend if you got folding chairs, take them with you because once you go out there and you start watching all the balloons and stuff, staying there for up to four hours gets a little tiring. So you might want to take your um, your chairs with you. And at nighttime, I'd recommend taking a flashlight with you as well. The last thing I got to tell you, this has been amazing. This was on our bucket list and so far, this has got to be the best thing that we have seen. It is just fabulous. And videos and photos can cannot do it justice at all. You gotta be in the thick of things with nearly a million people. It's just totally awesome. And when there is no sessions going on, meet up with the people in the park, in your RV park. Um, we've met some really nice people. Um, and heard a lot of stories and learned some things so anyways that's always a fun part of RVing as well uh, but if this is on your bucket list you gotta do it and yeah take a balloon ride it's 6 15 Saturday morning opening day of 2019 Albuquerque balloon fiesta just got in no problem come through gate 31 at VIP North no waiting to do a little TSA check we have the Krispy Kreme balloon today and the mass ascension at seven o'clock. This is so cool. the first one. They're going to go right over our, our trailer. Yeah. <laughs> we could have stayed in the trailer. Huh? Not quite the same. Yeah, he's got the pedal on that one. Look how small the baskets are. Yeah. He better put some heat to it. He's going to start taking out the crowd. I got some wind today. He's just providing a little more excitement. The balloon's pretty. Yeah, it is. Probably something from a distance. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's even something better up close. <laughs> they have a flag that they fly. Greens go, yellow is we're waiting to see, and red is ain't going nowhere. Like we got some riders. I see the paddles with the numbers on them. People walking behind them. So they must be taking rides with these balloons today. <laughs> yeah. We have balloons inflating all around us. I don't know how they can get them so close. That one's starting to come up. Just inflate it. Just spread out, boy. <laughs> awesome. You gotta do this. It's a bucket list check. Check. Still got a yellow flag, though. Well, you get to see a lot of them on the ground. <laughs> Flags is where our RV is. It's like all the RVers are up there standing and watching. I got water, but not much.
at the same time, doesn't it? Now the rows of balloons are getting closer to us as they inflate, take off. Nebraska in two days they're gonna be like I want the winds here so they're, right. they're planning that far ahead and how long do you say they'll be in the air they're, they stay in the air two days three days sometimes two, three days. yeah so long as they can to make as it to the furthest they mark yep. they have to land before they hit the ocean if they go into the uh -huh. ocean oh you're disqualified oh. <laughs> do they have communication with them? oh yes they have communication, they have transponders, they have, the airplanes can see them, they know where they're at. Oh, wow. that, they, they avoid radar, them that way. They have radar, there. they have a, an alert system. If they come down and hit the water, it'll send off a beacon saying, oh, they, they landed in the water. And, uh, yep. How far will these probably go? De it, it depends on the winds and all that. Right. We We've finally had them found in the past, them now. Uh, last Sounds race good. was two years ago. A couple of them landed like in Michigan area, some landed in Canada. But in years past, we've actually had them land in, in Maine. We've had them land in New Hampshire. They went over 100 miles an hour hitting the jet stream. They can go up to 18,000 feet. Yeah, it might get a little With frosty oxygen. when you're all wet laying in there, you know, at 18,000 feet. What, what's the temperature at 18,000? It, yeah, it's very cold. It depends on, on below, below zero. Below yes. zero. Uh, when you go to sleep, there's a little, most of the baskets have a little door on the side that flips open, right. and your legs stick right, right up here over the edge. So you're laying down with your legs sticking no, out. Down, down, down. Is there a reason why so they choose to leave at night? Because the air is more stable at night. There's something known as the Albuquerque box, and it is a weather phenomenon where the lowest winds are moving in one direction and the higher level winds are moving in another. More specifically, in a perfect example of an Albuquerque box, the high winds are from the south, while the low winds are from the north. This is beneficial to ballooning because then the balloon can take off and land in almost exactly the same spot. Balloon pilots do not have a way to steer their hot air balloons. While they can control where the balloon flies vertically by adding heat, to make it go higher, they rely on the wind to determine their direction. So this Albuquerque box allows the pilots to better control where they fly and where they land. Different directions. Sometimes the Albuquerque box doesn't work the way that it's expected to work and the wind can die down and the next thing you know you've got balloons that are landing in the VIP North parking lot. In fact, they're landing directly behind our fifth wheel and you can watch a video on that. If you go to the Balloon Fiesta website, you can look up RV information and what you find out there for the 2020 pricing it is $40 for the south lot, dry camping, just a standard area. Uh, within the, sta the southern lot, you can also pay $50 for, I believe they call it the box location, which I believe is a little higher up, <clears throat> or $95 where you can get 30 amp electricity and water, and that's per night. Then if you look towards the middle of this map here, you'll see for $100 dry camping with a couple of admission, admission passes, you can go to VIP, and you can also go to the, the presidential, which is $250, where you get 3050 amp and water and four admission passes. You cannot just drive up to the Balloon Fiesta and expect to get an RV site. You have to reserve in advance. And if you go to their site, you will see 
that it says that they are already sold out for 2020 and they um, do still have some limited number of weekday sites that are available and their waiting list is actually closed at 1,100 requests but let me tell you something we kept looking to get on the waiting list and I think we finally got on it like in December or January of last year and if and there was over 2,000 on that list and then we finally got an email saying that a couple of sites had opened up because we needed two sites and wanted to know if we wanted them. They give you 72 hours to make that decision if you want to keep them. So keep going back and see if you can get on the waiting list. On their website, you will also see information on general admission, on how, where you park and how you can get rides in. And don't think that's the only thing to do there. You can also go into the old town of Albuquerque where they have neat stuff down there. They have authentic Mexican restaurants. You can also go see like the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center. Uh, there's casinos that are really nearby. And if you like motorcycling, they've got beautiful scenery. And I have a video on that as well. Other than that, I hope you enjoy the rest of these pictures from the Fiesta. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below, even if it's just to say hi. Don't forget to subscribe.